James Oda for Apple TV in association with Matthews Jim Marbella. With me, I've got Declan Brom Taylor, one of my favourite journalists. Oh, cheers, mate. What's happening, mate? Who's, your, right? who's your number one journalist? I've got to say Steve Lillis. Well, actually, oh, I'm going no. to say he's joint top with Ed Robinson. Oh, Ed, yeah. Ed's the man. Ed and Steve, he? yeah. Imagine they had a fight. I'm going to say probably Ed with Wings, he used to be a boxer. Yeah, but Lillis has got some stamina now. You've seen some of the times he's posting running. He's got stamina. Yeah, he has got stamina to burn. <laughs> Listen, he's half the man he once was. That's what I'm going to say. Literally. Literally yeah. What's cracking? Not Not set lot. for Mayweather? Yeah. Oh, as always, mate, I've got, the, got everything you could possibly need for a trip to Las Vegas. Got my uh, Hooters reference number. Oh, God. Love Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be staying there. If anyone hasn't been to Vegas, though, I'll be serious. Hooters is like the best place you can stay if you're working at the MGM. Sell it, sell it to me. That isn't the M if you're not staying at the MGM, like the company I work for, we're not gonna pay to stay in the MGM, simple as that, it's too expensive. You know as well as I do. And Saturday they put night. You in a strip bar. They put me yeah, they put me effectively <laughs> in the brass house. No, they don't. No, so you have to look for somewhere a little bit more uh, a little bit cheaper. I've stayed, and, I've stayed there. Are we, and we've stayed there together. We've stayed there together, well, yeah, together but but um, yeah. But it's literally across the road, it's the best place you stay for the MGM. So and you know, it's a busy, intense week, as you know, James, in Vegas. Like, it, it doesn't stop for like what we do. So, but yeah, looking forward to it. You know. How do you get the serious question here? Go on. How do you get the smell of cigars and fags out of your garments? Well, I don't. I don't. I, I, it's, it's unreal. Yeah, it's, I, I tell you, talking to smell, <laughs> Vegas smells. You know the smell in the MGM, like that vanilla smell? That's the smell. I you like know, that. I keep get every time I'm on the, going to Vegas soon, I, I smell it around the place. I think it's like a subconscious thing. But that is the smell you want. If you could bottle that and sell it, you'd make a lot of money. Strange thing, just going off subject a little bit here. The MGM office in my bar has got, it actually no smells way. like that. No I'm way. What, what it is, I'm just not, I've not got any information. Well, to get. you want to bottle that, mate? I'm telling you. Predictions then, go on then. Mayweather, Mayweather, mm -hmm. Mayweather's got a lot of stick for, for, for the fight being Berto, but going to make the most of it. It is what it is. Mm. How, how do you see the fight? Well, as a boxing fan, at first I was the same as everyone else. Like, oh, you know, I wanted to see him fight Khan. Didn't want to see him fight Berto, but you know what? I spoke to two big boxing people in the last 10 days. First one, I ran into Tundi Ajayi and I said to him, who, who do you fancy? Tundi knows he's boxing, obviously. Yeah. And he was like, you know what? Obviously, he thinks Mayweather's going to win, but he was like, it's going to be a good fight. Like, they're going to have a fight. It's going to be entertaining. It might even be more entertaining than Pacquiao fight. So you've got to respect what Tundi says. And then yesterday, I was in Manchester with Ricky Hatton and he was like, but he loved Berto when he was coming up, as a lot of people did. I'm sure you were the same. Yeah. Remember when he, you know, remember when he was coming up and I'm beating and stuff before the Ortiz fight, and he was like, "I'm really looking forward to it." I think Mayweather wins, obviously, but it might not be as kind of one-sided as people think. I think the annoying thing is, well, not annoying, but the truth, the fact of the matter is, who else, who else out there is there really? If he's not jumping up weight classes, he's not going to fight Golovkin, is he? He's not going to. Khan was obviously the big one, and you can look at Brook and Furman. It, there's always going to be these names, but I don't know. It's not, it's not the fight me or you wanted to see, I'm sure, but it's still going to be quite an event. Most importantly, though, George Groves on the undercard. Just going to come on to this. Yeah. Taking on Badu Jack from WBC. Yeah. Super middleweight title. George mm. Groves flying the flag. Well, how do you rate George Groves' chances coming into this? I think uh, I, I, I'm a massive fan of George Groves. I've been since, you know, before even before the Frotch fights when he was knocking people over. And then he had that big jump into the first Frotch fight and everyone's like, that's nah, too soon, too soon, whatever. Mm. But he's still, well, we all know what happens against Carl Frotch in both fights, but he's rebuilt. The Rebras fight got a bit of stick for it, but look what Rebras, you know, he, everyone now rates him as this tough guy and durable and stuff. And he knocked out Douglin, he wasn't at his best, but you've got to understand as well, he'd come off the back of preparing for two Carl Frotch fights, like two massive fights in his life, putting everything into it. And then you come down, and you're not fighting Carl Frotch anymore, you're not at Wembley anymore, it's got to play. He might not admit it, I'm not sure he'll have to speak to him, but you, it, that's got, that, psychologically, it's got to have an effect. Fact is, he's fighting Badu Jack. You could say he's probably the weakest champion at 68. He's going away, but he's not going away in a week. He's been at Big Bear for like two months or something. And I mean, we've all seen the videos and stuff that he's posting. He has been absolutely on it. And, you know, I think, he, I personally, I think he's going to do it. Famously, um, predicted uh, James DeGale to stop Darrell and a similar sort of thing, he went to America and he fought Darrell. Stop. And now I'm gonna, would predict, if you had money, get it on George Groves to win by stoppage because he can still punch. No matter if he's been cobra or what, he can still seriously punch. And you did just say if he's been cobra <laughs> Hey, well, listen, he might, he's, he might have been cobra who knows, who really knows. But seriously, 
Badu Jack, we, you know, we've seen him, he got knocked out by Derek Edwards. He was a bit of a prospect at one point. I remember, you know, before that and, you know, he beat Darrell as well. It wasn't a very entertaining fight. It wasn't the best Anthony Darrell we've ever seen, but, you know, he still won. He's still the champion. Personally, I think that George Groves is going to win the title and I think he'll probably do it by stoppage, personally. How do you see Jamie McDonald getting on in Texas against Kamida? He's defending his world title. He's already gone, done, their, done the job on him. He's going back to Texas to defend it. How do you see that one play? Well, I heard Barry Jones saying that he rates that as one of the best. I think he might have even said it's the best performance in America by a British fighter for 15 years. And you know what? He's not far wrong. And he hasn't got the sort of he hasn't got the ratings he deserves McDonald for that fight because Kamado is a serious guy, and and he's gone out there and beat him. To go out again, I assume he must be getting paid very well and good on him for it. Um, personally, I think, he, I think he'll win again. I think he, he's the sort of fighter who would have grown from that, from that victory. Going out there, the confidence of not only winning but getting up and winning can only kind of hold him in good stead when he does it again. I think he would have grown from that first fight. It would be a, even better McDonald. There was all sorts of stuff going on behind the scenes in the first fight as well. I remember he. He, you know, his trainer, he had to, he got Dave Caldwell involved. His trainer wouldn't fly. Well, trainer wouldn't fly. He, he got, he stuck, of planes, yeah, he got stuck in like a, something and, and Gavin was training him at one point. No, it wasn't plain sailing. He still went there, he still did the business. This time, should all be perfect. I think he'll win again. Um, I, I'm, you know, always bad at being a bit kind of heart overhead, but I think, seriously, I think he'll win. And so will Groves, yeah. All right. Let's talk a little bit about Miguel Cotto versus Sol Canelo Alvarez. One of the biggest fights to be made on the planet at the moment. Absolutely mm. monster fight. Had first and foremost, as a boxing fan, you pleased that fight's been made? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I agree. Again, Ricky said yesterday, it's probably the best fight that could be made in boxing. Probably up there. Personally, I don't know. I always think when you when a fight gets made, you always you always have an initial feeling, like a gut feeling, like right, he's going to win or this is going to happen. And then throughout all the build up and the talk and like 24 seven all that sort of stuff, you kind of start changing your mind, cut against way. And always, it's the old adage, always stick with what you thought at the start when it was first made. Because as soon as you start thinking, oh, this could happen, and you start getting influenced by press comments. And at the start, I thought Canelo wins. He's fresher, bigger, he's, on, you know, he's in great form. Cotto, although he beat Martinez, it wasn't a fully fit Martinez, as we've seen. And you know, I think Canelo is going to win. And I think it's not going to be as close a fight as it, as it kind of is perceived to be. In terms of the size of this, this fight, everyone thinks it's a huge fight, which it is, but I think it's not as close as people think for that. I think Canelo is a clear favourite at the moment, I really do. I think you could stop him as well. Um, I think it's the fight that Canelo needs as well at this point because he's been rebuilding obviously since that defeat and he's looked brilliant, I'm sure you'd agree. And if he beats Cotto, if he beats him in style, he's like right up there. Because let's be honest, when Mayweather goes, we're looking for a real star. He's been the kind of guy in waiting, and if he beats Cotto, that's that's exactly what he is. He, you know, he's there. He's there, and I mean that that big rivalry, Mexican Puerto Rico, is going to be going to be huge. I don't, I'm hoping I can get sent out there for it. For what I do, it's probably not enough um, kind of English interest. Which you is speak straight. Mexican or Puerto Rican? I can speak Puerto Rican fluently. I was actually born there, but um, there you go. yeah. So, but I, I don't think that will kind of wash on my bosses. But I'm hoping maybe you'll get someone <laughs> on the undercard. Get like. Uh, who was it on the undercard at Thingy? Tom Dallas or something? Some, <laughs> something like that. And then maybe I could get out there, but uh, I'm sure you boys will be there representing. But, um, We're gonna have a, definitely going to have a go. Yeah, but I personally, I think Canelo wins. I think it's not as close as people think. Well, I'm always wrong, so probably don't put your money on it. You are wrong quite a lot. Yeah. Just coming back onto what you said about Canelo maybe taking over, do you think you now with hindsight, maybe with his win over Canelo, in the future will look a lot a lot better because Canelo will grow yeah. into into probably a main force in boxing. Yeah, it was always that said at the time, if you remember, it was like, well, you know, maybe was getting him at the right time, he's getting him early because he could see the sort of force he was going to be. And I think it will be one of those wins that matures. A bit like Joe Calzaghi's win over Bernard Hopkins, which now looks like incredible, doesn't it? I mean, it was good enough at the time. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, you look at Mayweather, <laughs> what he's done, you look at his, you'll look at his record when he retires, you'll be like, wow, look what he did to Canelo. Take out the old CJ the CJ Ross card and then you know it was like a landslide it was an amazing performance and I think when we look back on it it will be a it will be a kind of bigger victory a stronger victory on his resume but I mean it's not like he needs any on there do you think he'll, he'll fight after the 50th fight if he is victorious what on to 50 you know what again I thought it was I thought it was guaranteed but speaking to people seeing that stuff that you've saying about Roger as well you know I wouldn't put it past him to just 
be like now. But then, I mean, I, I don't know, because I've never been, you might be surprised with this, I've never been in a situation where I can make like 30 million on a night or 50 million or whatever it is. Imagine that, like, walking away from that opportunity. I know he's got a lot of money, but it's money that motivates him. But imagine that, you have the opportunity to make 50 million a night and you're like, actually, no, nah, I won't bother, I'll just kind of put my feet up. But I can't see it, I can't see it happening myself, but, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a different creature, isn't he? And as, as Ricky Hatton said, he, he's a person who wants to be the best at everything. So why, why would he stop when he's joint with someone? That's just not, surely not in his makeup. Mm. And he'd go for 50, could be the Pacquiao rematch. We're hearing a lot about this new arena in Vegas. What a perfect start to it. He obviously f would fancy the Pacquiao fight again because what he did in the first one. So yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be great if we got him against Amir Khan in Vegas? Mm. Can't see it myself, but mm. for the 50. I'll tell you, is is something that I had. <laughs> I don't know it's pretty mental, but before the Maidana fight, the first one, I think, I was speaking to Bernard Hopkins in Vegas and he said, he was doing like one of these round tables where everyone, he talks for about an hour, you can't shut him up. And he says that, why don't I fight Floyd Mayweather? Because I'll be 50 and he'll be going for 50 and we can call it 50-50. And you'll see like what I go through to train and stuff. And I was like, yeah, you're mental. But Floyd, <laughs> Floyd and Bernard Hopkins are big mates, you know. Maybe we'll see a catch fight, catch weight fight, 50-50. And if we do, I mean, Bernard Hopkins called it last year. So 50-50, that's his opponent. You heard it here first on IFL TV via our international correspondent, Grom. <laughs> I'm from Swindon, actually. Grom from Swindon. Do not wear your Matrix coat in Vegas, it's embarrassing. And we'll catch you again <laughs> real soon. Cheers, mate.